Welcome back everyone to Knee Pit Gaming. Today's video, we're gonna be taking another look at The Commission, which is an upcoming grand strategy game that is due for release on August 23rd on Steam. Today's video, we're gonna be focusing on rackets. Rackets are the specific businesses that you can run within the individual neighborhoods on the map in order to earn money and influence within the town. So we're looking at the entire map here. We have five boroughs, which are the major divisions within the, the map. And then within each borough, we will have a certain number of neighborhoods. So the first thing we have to do before we can even consider what rackets we might want to invest in is we have to move muscle into the neighborhood. So we have to start off by moving muscle into the borough. For our purposes today, we are the purple team the Donano family. So we, I've already moved in some muscle there. Now we need to zoom in a little bit and you can see that there are lots of uh, potential neighborhoods in each of these boroughs for us to invest in. Again, for our purposes today, we are going to be looking at Rodham Hill. And you can see I've already moved some muscle in here as well. So now that we, we have that, we can begin making investments and I've done just that. So the rackets that we can invest in are your second tab here and you notice that I've already invested $10,000 into extortion but it's not going so well. The one thing you need to understand about this game is that not all of these rackets are suitable for every neighborhood. So then your question might be well how do I know which rackets go with which neighborhoods and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. At the end of this video, I'm actually gonna be showing you a spreadsheet that I've put together, which will take care of a lot of the answers to these questions uh, that you might have and should serve as a very nice guide to get you started uh, figuring out which of these particular rackets that you wanna put in each particular neighborhood. So how do we uh, divide that out? Well, we have a number of characteristics of each neighborhood. We have the affluence, the affluency level of the neighborhood that is either poor, average, or rich. We also have the size of the neighborhood, which can be small, medium, or large. So the combination of these two will give you an idea of which of these rackets will receive certain bonuses or certain penalties based on the type of neighborhood that you're located in. Also, you notice down below we have violence. Violent rackets are not good in this particular neighborhood. Now, whenever you first start out in a particular neighborhood, you're not gonna know this. The only thing you're gonna know is the affluency level and the size of the neighborhood. But as you make further investments, you will see these particular indicators uh, that, will, that will come in if they are applicable. Some neighborhoods won't have any bonuses or penalties. Others will have several. I've come across a case where I actually had two bonuses uh, in a particular neighborhood and that made certain rackets extremely profitable and those are the kind of things that you want to know and that's what we're going to be taking a look at uh, a little bit later on in the spreadsheet itself. But for this particular case, violent rackets are no good. Well, extortion falls under that particular category of rackets. So you can see our potential we had a potential investment of $10,000. That's what we started out with, and we were expecting to make a certain amount of profit. You can, again, see the potential rackets down below that we can invest in, the amount of initial investment, as well of, as the base level of profit you should expect. But, as we can see here, we're only getting 35% of the potential here. And you notice as I mouse over the potential percentage, you can see at the very top, hated racket penalty. That refers to this regarding violence. Okay, that lets us know that we're immediately gonna take a haircut of 50% off of our profit just for investing in anything violent in this particular neighborhood. The rest of the multipliers there you can see, for the most part, those are all pretty much set by any number of other things within the game, but for this particular video, we're gonna be concerned about the penalties and uh, the 
particular bonuses that we can get from rackets in certain neighborhoods. So here, we definitely don't want to be involved in any sort of violent rackets because it will crush our profits. And in fact, we are actually taking a small loss. So in this particular case, I have two options. Uh, for the most part, we can further invest. If we're getting a great return on our money, then we could choose to invest more money in this particular racket or we can sell out of it in this particular case we're making a terrible return on our money so i'm going to go ahead and sell this one and i'll know for the future i don't want any more violent rackets in this particular neighborhood okay now let's scroll down a little bit and i am going to uh, put in we're going to run the numbers otherwise known as the italian uh, lottery so we're actually going to confirm everything with our moving forward to the next turn. We'll come back into our rackets, make sure we have the proper screen up, and then we come to the top where it shows our invested rackets versus our potential rackets, and then we're going to click on the numbers. Here you're going to see something you're going to see a lot, 79.7%. So you might be wondering, why don't we have 100%? Because if you notice as I mouse over and the pop-up doesn't show any negatives. Well, the reason is 100% would be before anything is taken into account. We have to pay our muscle. We have to pay our uh, capital regime that is over this particular area. So we have to pay people in order to run our business. But you notice at the very top, we do have a bonus. The numbers racket benefits from being in a large neighborhood. So we have a 25% bonus here. So that means our cut is 79.7%. And the reason I say you're going to see that a lot is because that's the percentage you're going to see if you have a single bonus without any penalties, uh, particularly the penalties that you get from uh, each of the neighborhoods, whether it's a favored racket or a penalized type of racket. So in this case, we could again choose to invest more money, we could choose to sell, or the other option that we didn't talk about just a moment ago is suspend. Now the reason why you might want to suspend a particular racket or several rackets is if the, the amount of heat you're getting in a particular neighborhood is increasing. The more heat you have in a neighborhood, the more likely that someone in your family is going to be arrested, whether it's a soldado, or what have you. And of course, if people get arrested, there's a possibility that they might uh, sing to the police and that could end your entire game and uh, cripple you. Because if you lose control over a particular area, like right now I've moved in 21 muscle to this particular neighborhood. If somebody gets arrested, uh, for instance, a, a soldado gets arrested and we lose our muscle, then all of the money we have invested in this neighborhood along with all of our profits, goes away. So those are things to keep in mind. Now we're actually going to jump around a little bit and I'm going to show you some examples from games that I've been playing a little bit longer and show you some examples of some of the, uh, the bonuses as well as some of the penalties that you can receive. For this particular example, we are going to be looking at a save that is a little bit farther along, still very early in uh, the game, so we have a couple of hundred thousand uh, dollars here, which by no, is by no means a great start uh, to the game. For our purposes, it's going to be perfect, though, because what I want to show you is we're going to be looking at Shore Bay, and immediately you notice as I mouse over, the investment is fully purple. Uh, and again, I have stuck with the purple family, the Donano family, for our examples. You can see that we have a very small percentage of the pie as far as occupation, but we are fully invested. And again, as we talked about earlier, the allied investment, which is in fact, all investment is 400,000, which is the maximum. So I have fully invested everything that I can in Shore Bay. So let's come in and take a look at the rackets. Now we notice that this is an average size neighborhood and it is a large neighborhood, but we have a couple of very large bonuses. Gambling rackets do well here as well as entertainment rackets. So let's take a look at what that might include. If I click on casino, 
that will fit the bill for both and look at this huge amount of potential. Again, as I mouse over, you can see the two favored racket bonuses at the very top. Each of those are 50%, so we already are doubling our profit just based on these two bonuses that we've picked up. We also have a multiplier from additional investment. That's because at the bottom of the screen, as we looked at uh, previously, I have chosen to continue to invest for obvious reasons. We are getting a huge return here, so I have chosen to continue to invest. And if you look, our weekly profit right now is just over $49,000 per week from just this one casino in this one neighborhood. So you can see there are, is quite a bit of potential for huge amounts of money to be made if you match up the neighborhood type with the bonus types. And then of course, you wanna stay away from any of the penalties. Now let's move to another save. And I wanna show you some examples of a game that's a little bit farther along. Now we're gonna take a look at another save that is a little bit farther along, but still very early game. But we have now 11.6 million. So we are, are already off to a very good start. So we're back here at the main map. And let's take a, a quick look at the rackets screen which is the second tab at the top and again you you can actually move this window back and forth uh, whether you want to hide it or show it by clicking here on the left hand side of the screen where it highlights so in under the rackets you're going to see this marker fill up toward 100 percent as you invest more in each type of racket so you can see casinos here I have invested not quite half of the amount of money I would need in order to have a possibility to unlock the ability to decrease heat from casinos by 50%. So that could be a huge idea to keep us out of trouble, but we need to invest some more money. You can see some of these I've not invested very much, if any, money in. Gentlemen's Club. We could unlock this perk. In fact, we've done so. You can see we filled up the entire uh, bar there. So we've decreased the heat from the Gentleman's Club by 50%. Okay, and then again, there are any number of, of bonuses that can be unlocked in any of these particular uh, rackets. Also, while we're on uh, the topic, something that, uh, particularly as you progress through the game and you start to get a lot of money flowing, as you can see, $11.6 million is not bad at all, you can actually come in under one of the other tabs. You can come in under the Territory tab. The Territory tab is going to break apart the different boroughs that you see on the screen, and it's going to show you your lifetime profit from this particular borough as well as the amount of weekly profit that you are currently receiving. In this case, East Cushman, I did have some money that I was making in that particular neighborhood, but I have since left that neighborhood, so I'm no longer earning any profit there. In the Fordham neighborhood, which is down here in the bottom left, we are currently making $128,000 per turn. And you can see our lifetime profit there is also quite nice, about $4.4 .4 million. Then we come down to Rochester, which is at the top of the screen, and we'll be looking at momentarily. We're making a, a weekly profit of $186,000 there, and we've made over $10 million just so far in the game. So we're very early in the game and you can see I've not even invested in uh, very many of the neighborhoods. So let's go ahead and for now let's focus on Rochester. So we're going to zoom in here on Rochester and we're going to start out we're going to take a look at Energy Park. Okay so our, our base screen we only have 11 muscle here uh, out of a possible uh, 50 and you can see there are no other families currently operating in this neighborhood and the biggest reason for that is I have already monopolized the investment here 353,000 out of a possible 400,000 so not much room for further investment if we take a look at the type of neighborhood we have this is an average neighborhood and is very large neighborhood okay and then our two uh, favored or penalized rackets are the theft type as well as the financial. So if we have any type of uh, theft rackets in this particular neighborhood, they are going to receive a 50% bonus. If we have financial rackets, on the other hand, they are going to receive a 50% penalty. So now let's take a look at the individual rackets 
that I'm currently running in this neighborhood. We are running the numbers, which you can see gives us a 25% bonus from a large neighborhood. Again, I'm going to show you a spreadsheet with a breakdown of a lot of these bonuses uh, that will be great to get you started uh, toward the end of the video. But for now, just know that numbers receives a bonus from being in a large neighborhood. You can also see the multiplier from additional investment is at currently at a 2.0. And that's because I have chosen to further invest money. And you can see there's still a little bit of room, about 50,000 that we saw on the other screen that is still able to be invested in this neighborhood. So we could continue to invest in uh, these rackets. The gambling bin, you can see 318%. And we have the one bonus because it is an average neighborhood of 25%. All right, but if we move down a little bit, hijacking, 484%. And that is because we have a bonus of 25% because it's an average neighborhood. We also have a favored racket bonus. That's the theft. And it is 50%. So the fact that we know that theft rackets do well here that helps us out tremendously and we get that extra 50%. The multiplier for uh, the racket age, some of the different rackets will become better or worse the longer that you keep them in play. A great example of this would be insurance fraud. Insurance fraud pays out the most you're gonna get very early on and then it declines over a period of time. So if you choose to go with a racket like that, then you're gonna to want to remember that and keep a track on it as the profits start to decline. And at some point, you'll want to either suspend it or sell it off. Then as we continue working our way down, multiply for muscle. I've always seen that at 0.75. So I'm not sure if that ever changes. Uh, but the multiplier for perks and policies, this is where you get into the different bonuses uh, that your different soldados or uh, capo regimes might have. And in order to uh, take a look briefly at that, again, we're not really focusing on this as, uh, as part of this particular video, but just to give you an idea of where those bonuses come from, if we choose one of our guys, he has a couple of traits. He has a, mi a minor trait and a major trait. So this guy can negate heat generation when it is already below 10. So you can see we're at a plus zero now, so we're in great shape there. He also has the sticky fingers which allows him, uh, Sticky Fingers perk, which allows him to increase profit from theft rackets by 10%. So that's part of that difference that we just saw. Also, you're going to get into other things such as politics and whoever the mayor, police chief, district attorney, and judge are at any given time. Again, we're not focusing on these in this particular video, but each of them have a particular uh, either bonus or a penalty for certain types of rackets. In this case, the current mayor is increasing the profit and heat from gambling rackets by 30%. And then we also have, he's a small business advocate, which increases profit by 15% in average neighborhoods. So you can see how you have, for each one of these political officers, you have different uh, perks as well as different family members have different perks. The soldados have perks. The capo regimes have perks and, and so on as you continue on throughout the game. So there's a lot to keep in mind as you're traveling through the game. But let's move down uh, a little bit. So we took a look at hijacking, which has a great rate of return, uh, plus 75% total between the plus 50 and the plus 25. And you can see we have invested quite a bit of extra. We're up to 3.1% on the multiplier there. And then the final uh, perk right under the perks and policies is the amount after the capo regime cut. That's currently at 0 0.85, which means that our capo regime for this particular area is currently taking 15%. And now let's take a look at how you can adjust that and where you can see how that lines up. If we look at the top of our window and come across to the finance tab, you will see each of our capo regimes is in here as well as the percentage, the cut that they're taking off the top. And also keep in mind that you might you might immediately think, well, let's just decrease this. So he gets less, uh, less money for him, more money for us. 
Well, that can be a double-edged sword because it might give you more money in the short term, but this affects loyalty. So the more money you give him, the bigger cut you give him, the more loyal he will be. And if you do run into any legal issues, he will be there to help you out and will not uh, rat on you or, or turn you in. So a lot of different moving parts to keep in mind. So it's not as simple as just saying this type of neighborhood do this. There are a lot of modifiers and a lot of seemingly randomness to the game uh, each time you play through. So what is actually favorite in a particular neighborhood? For instance, in Energy Park right now, theft is favored and financial rackets are penalized. Well, the next time you do a playthrough, that may not be the case. So again, keep that in mind. It also greatly increases the replayability when you know that going in. So again, if we zoom back out, we are in the Rochester area. So let's actually move around a little bit. Now again, I'm looking for the purple uh, circles because that indicates that I have a presence there. So we'll go to Vaulton. And here you can see this is a rich neighborhood, but it's a small neighborhood. And they are against violent crime as well as smuggling. So those rackets will not do well here. But immediately, it's a rich neighborhood, so I'll put a casino here. And a casino, 153%. Very good. I have not invested further in there. And in fact, you can see I cannot. And that is because 100000 is all you can invest here. It did, however, inv let me go over that because I did all of that in one turn. So I worked around a little bit. So the casino, you can see 153%. We have a bonus because it's a small neighborhood and another bonus because it is a rich neighborhood. So start to think for just a moment what would happen if you had rich neighborhood, small neighborhood, plus gambling types received an extra 50%. You can start to see how these bonuses really add up and it really works in your favor if you look around the map and try to see and match up the types of neighborhoods to the bonuses you have for particular rackets. You can get a lot of money very quickly by doing this very thing. In fact, that's exactly how I got to 11.6 million uh, fairly early on. Because again, each turn uh, is a week and it does not take long for this thing to start rolling by, particularly at the beginning when you don't have all that much invested. All right, that's going to do it for this portion of the video. Now, when we come back, we're going to be taking a look at the spreadsheet and I'll give you some more breakdown about which bonuses and penalties apply. All right, now let's take a look at a, a simple spreadsheet that I put together uh, to hopefully give you guys some information that you need to get started with the different records and how they apply to different neighborhoods. So to begin with, we're going to be taking a look at the bonuses, which are 25% extra. Penalties will cost you 25% percent of uh, the revenue and then there are certain uh, types of neighborhoods that simply have no effect whatsoever on the amount of money that you will earn so once again just as a review neighborhood sizes are either small medium or large the financial status of a particular neighborhood is either poor average or rich Okay, now let's take a look at the bonuses. And a lot of these will simply make sense. If you think about them uh, just a little bit, then you'll figure out, okay, that makes more sense. For example, the numbers, okay, which is otherwise known as the Italian lottery. It does very well in large neighborhoods. That's access to more people to play. And then also it does better in poor neighborhoods because we know rich people generally don't play the lottery. So those are your bonuses there. So if you have a large, poor neighborhood, then you're going to want to put the numbers racket in there. Mugging, it does great in rich neighborhoods. Again, makes sense. A gentleman's club does very well in rich neighborhoods. Also, average neighborhoods, this does pretty well. But the poor neighborhoods don't have quite enough money uh, to frequent the gentleman's club, and therefore you don't get... The bonuses. Casinos. It makes sense that you would want to put a casino in a rich neighborhood. So those are some of the bonuses. And there you can see uh, the ones that I found. I'm sure this is by no means a comprehensive list. And of course, because I am actually filming this before the official release of the game, some of this or all of this is subject to change. Let's move over to the penalties. 
Again, we can have penalties for either the neighborhood size or the financial status, just like we saw with the bonuses. So something like mugging does not do well in large neighborhoods. Protection does not do well in large neighborhoods. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. Gambling dens do not do well in rich neighborhoods. That's If you want to go gambling, you would go casino in the rich neighborhood. So distilleries, they do well in poor neighborhoods, but they do not do well in rich neighborhoods. So you would receive a 25% penalty for putting a distillery in a rich neighborhood. Okay, so those are some of the penalties that you will come across in the game. And then there are a lot of times where the neighborhood size or financial status simply makes no difference whatsoever. And I've listed those that I've come across. Again, this is not a comprehensive list. I'm sure there are some that I simply haven't come across and haven't added to this list. Uh, also, it's possible that some of these might be incorrect. Uh, after you've looked at enough of these neighborhoods, you, your eyes start to cross a little bit. So it's possible I could have um, been mistaken on some of these. But I feel like this is a very good way to get you guys started with a lot of information that can really help you to capitalize early game in particular and get a lot of money going very quickly per week. Now, additional things to keep in mind, and we've talked about these uh, throughout the video, and that is keep, in, uh, keep on the lookout for favored rackets and also penalizing rackets with, throughout a neighborhood. Again, you're not going to see that when you first arrive on a neighborhood. You're gonna, it's going to take multiple turns and some investment before these things start to become revealed to you. So keep that in mind. You might go with what you believe is a great racket for this particular neighborhood, only to find out a few turns later that there is actually a racket penalty of 50% for that particular one. So again, you have to go back to your neighborhoods constantly and keep an eye on your investments and making sure that you are optimizing what you're doing. Also, the perks and policies. We took a look at this, whether it's bonuses or penalties from your capo regimes, your soldados, or if you get into the mayor, the or any of uh, these other elected uh, or appointed positions within the game itself. So all of those types of things will affect how much money you're making or losing per turn uh, because it is possible to lose money on particular rackets as we saw toward the beginning of the video. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more coverage of the commission.